And we have clients like uh, that's doing the challenge. Her name is Shannon Fridiani. I don't know if you've seen her in the post, um, but she has a rare, um, she tore both of her knees and her doctor told her that she could never walk ever again. So she came to the gym in a wheelchair. And so and she's like, I can never walk again. And it was a challenge for me. I was like, oh, no, 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 you're going to be walking. So I trained her for the last, I don't know, 10 years that I was in that gym. And she can walk, she's done a composition, she's bodybuilding, she's doing squats every day. So, you know, it's, it's rewarding. Ooh, I need to be Welcome back to Mom Nation from the Heart. And now a word from our sponsor. Hello, everyone. This is Ryan Gilliam, Senior Mortgage Banker with Waterstone Mortgage. If you're looking to buy a new home or even refinance a current one, I'm able to help you find the best program and interest rate that fits your specific needs. You could call me anytime directly at phone number 480-635-3035. Three, five, if you have any mortgage questions or if you're ready to get pre-approved for a new home purchase. Thank you. Hey, everybody. It is From the Heart, the From the Heart podcast with your Mom Nation crew. I am Katie. I'm the founder of Mom Nation. We have the lovely, the beautiful, the wonderful, the inspirational, gorgeous, blonde co-founder of Mom Nation. There she is. She is with us as well. How are you doing today, Sherry? I'm great. How are you? Doing awesome. It's always so amazing to see you. Even though we are miles apart, at least we have this Zoom thing and I get to still see your pretty face and talk to you almost like you were here. <laughs> yes. And today I'm excited about today because we have our favorite people on. I know. They are some of my favorite people too. I know both you and I share in that. Um, but for those of you, maybe this is your first episode. Welcome. Um, we are, like I said, Mom Nation from the heart where we talk about um, different things like share inspirational stories, useful information, and discuss a variety of women-related products. Uh, products. Well, maybe that too, but also <laughs> topics. So today we have our very favorite fitness ladies, Abby and Claire with Mad Fit Unlimited. They are out of the Phoenix area. And um, thank you guys so much for spending a little bit of time with us today. We sure appreciate it. Thank you. We appreciate you guys so much. And just being able to tell people about our passion is just such a treat. Uh, I agree. And I know that you're passionate about it because like I mentioned at the beginning and Sherry knows too, we've been working with you guys. So it was so cool a couple of months ago. Don't know if you guys out there caught the live and learn that we did with Claire and Abby a couple of months ago. I think it was in May of uh, 2021. We talked a little bit about fitness. We're going to get in a lot deeper. And again, this is the From the Heart podcast. So we're going to talk about things that really matter, right? That really touch the heart. And I first want to start with kind of tossing the baton over to Claire and Abby. Tell us just a little bit about how you guys got started when you joined forces, like why Mad Fit Unlimited? Where, what are the beginnings? Where did this come from? Just kind of take us along that journey. <laughs> They're looking at each other like, do you want to go? Do you want to go? <laughs> I, I had like a whole separate life before this. I uh, was in the mortgage industry. I was a mortgage broker, sat at a desk and you know, up when the bell rang in New York and um, worked 12, 14 hour days. Um, very unhealthy. I would chug a bottle of wine when I got home. I smoked cigarettes. What? Um, yeah. Yeah. The commute to Seattle is not fun. So yeah, uh, I was a very unhealthy person. I knew all the right things to do. I had actually taken many, many, many classes on nutrition and um, kinesiology and all of that. I was very, uh, I was Where's always it? interested in it but I just didn't do the work. I just, I, it was better to make money. Um, the, like, I woke up like this. So no, I no, <laughs> I, I was skinny fat. I think I was 30% fat. I was probably a hundred. I was always around hundred, 120 pounds. I'm 140 now. Oh baby. Um, but, and which would have terrified me back then, but I just, the, the market dropped in 2009 and you know, everything went to shit and I just got it in my head. I'm like, I want to be a runner. <laughs> I just want to run. So thankfully that got me to quit smoking because you cannot smoke and run. Figured that out. Yeah, no. 
but it was one day at a time. I just, I ran like around the corner and almost died, came home the next day, ran around the corner, one more house, almost died, came home until I got a mile. And I'm like, Oh my God, a mile, you know, it's, it was a process. And then, you know, I had to tap back into what I knew I should be eating. And I just started to do more research and started to go to school and um, CrossFit was my first passion. I owned a CrossFit gym in Washington <clears throat> and I love the camaraderie. That was like the biggest kicker for me is that all these people were suffering together. We're all doing the same workout. We're all cussing out the same coach, you know, um, everybody's eating paleo, you know, the same thing. So that we're all on the same page as far as nutrition. So that really, I loved that part of it. CrossFit's a sport. However, it is not a way to get fit. It's a way to bust yourself <laughs> if you do it in a, as a way to get fit because just that fast pace is not okay so then I decided to just look into bodybuilding I sold my gym went to this little community gym met Abby and the rest is history you should have seen her I was like all right Claire let's do a shoulder press she was like <laughs> I was like what are you doing <laughs> like it's not for time she's like what <laughs> Oh, I don't know how to do it slow. <laughs> and so if you're a CrossFitter, you know what that means. Like everything's timed. You do everything like a spazoid. Yeah. <laughs> totally not safe. And unfortunately, <laughs> it does not, it doesn't, it's not a way to get fit and holistically. Like you're not hitting every muscle group at every angle and hitting all of that, you know, the way that you should in a very balanced manner. So that's why bo bodybuilding is a, special guest. a much oh. better way to go about, about it. Mika. Okay. Gorgeous. No special guest. Yes. The mascot. The mad yeah. fit mascot. She needs an outfit too. Oh, oh goodness. She has. Oh, we have. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like them. <laughs> so yeah, that's my that's basically my life in a nutshell. So let me get this straight. So Abby was your trainer. Mm, we we're both trainers. Oh, but okay. I, but you know, trainers need trainers. So I was. Yeah, I was like, teach me. She's checking you know. me out. Yeah, I had a crush. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> I'm all like, uh, I don't want to train this girl. She's too cute. Um, and I'm all sweating. I'm like, oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> She'll ask me something, and I'm like, Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. So, so bring us back to the beginnings of Abby. So where did Abby start, and how did you guys come together as trainers at this gym? Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> I know. You, you don't even know what you just did, Katie. <laughs> Whoops. PG. PG. Oh, yeah. PG-13. This is in TikTok. Oh, that's for TikTok? Okay. Sherry's been training me a lot, and I still don't get it, but I'm working on it. <laughs> She's good at it. I know. Uh, for me, um, I've always been an athlete, so I speed skated, uh, figure skated. Um, and then life happened. So my main, what is my thing? My main job, I'm, I'm a, what am I? I'm an architect, actually. What am I? What am You're, I? Many, you're many things. I am a licensed architect in Arizona, um, Colorado, and Hawaii. Oh, wow. Yes. Good to know. So that is my main thing, but I don't do it anymore because I don't, I hated it. Um, the money was great. I mean, the money was great, but it was like, I was unhappy. And so I decided um, to just start working out again. So when I was an athlete, I stopped, I got injured. I started eating the same way while I was training and I started getting um, chunky. So I was like, I got to do something. Um, like I said, the last time this coach was like, hey, why don't you try bodybuilding? And I was like, yeah, but I can't do it. My knees hurt. You know, I have all the excuse in the world. My elbows, I just can't do a push up. I'm all legs. And so he's like, well, you just have to eat right and be non-functional. <laughs> so I was like, cool. So I don't have to do all the crazy stuff that we used to train in. And so that got me into bodybuilding and I loved it because, um, you know, being a figure skater, you're always with a whole bunch of people and you're performing. So when I did bodybuilding, it's kind of like it brings me back to my skating days where, you know, I get to, well, not really the makeup part, but I get to glam up perform in front of a lot of people and then that kind of brought it back so what else uh, I was in the military um I was a TI so I trained people just like now so that's why I love training so much uh Sherry's like Ugh. I yelled, <laughs> no I love it <laughs> I yelled at Sherry a lot <laughs> <laughs> mini Sherry's all over that's right um 
What am I missing? So MadFit, MadFit. Um, so when we were in, I ran gyms in Seattle, Washington. Washington. Uh, I ran three gyms. Uh, they're big, big box gyms. Um, never met her. We live in the same town. We lived there for like 10, 11 years and never met her at all. And we go to different same functions and whatnot. Um, but how MadFit started is I always get mad when I worked out because like, I can't do this. I'm like, oh, mad. But then I was like, well, I can use mad as passionate. I'm mad about something like I, I want this. So I started this in apparel company um, in like 20, 2010. And then it's just kind of like um, apparel company didn't quite, there's too many moving parts and I was by myself. And so I just kind of just- And she's a Gemini, so it was just like, wow. <laughs> it's like, ooh, what, squirrel, squirrel. It's like, ooh, color, what, what? Yeah, so that didn't happen. It still stayed there. It had all the, like some merch and stickers. People knew about it. Um, and then I got really sick from cancer. If I wasn't sick, I mean, if I wasn't healthy and ate what I ate, um, I'd probably be no longer here. So the doctor gave me a brain cancer. The doctor gave me a year to live. So I continued my passion. I kept working out. Uh, nobody even knew I was sick until my eyebrows were gone. They were just like, something's off with you. But I still worked out, uh, took care of all my clients. How many shows did you do while you were sick? Um, I did four different shows while I was going through chemo and radiation. Um, no excuses, people. Zero My workouts excuses. were... <laughs> Seriously. Um, my workouts were like two minutes, but they last, they felt like it was four hours. Um, I still did my cardio. I did what I needed to do, um, kept my mind busy, um, stayed healthy all throughout. So, and then I met Claire. And then that's where the magic mad fit happened. <laughs> and then the magic happened. So I want to dive. I'm, I'm glad that you said that you both have truly inspirational stories. I want to dive into yours a little bit, Abby, um, because we know, cause we've, you know, we've been working with you and obviously you guys know that, that there are many benefits to working out. And one of them, um, you know, there's the obvious benefits, right. But one of them is the, that mental health benefit. Can you kind of dive into that? Maybe share some experiences, Abby, when you were sick, how, um, you know, it helped you get through that part of your life and then maybe share some examples of some people that you've trained that have really worked through it with the help of what you guys do? Um, well, for me, you know, when I found out I had cancer, I had it three times. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so the first one was a brain cancer. The second one was a side effect from my chemo. So I ended up with um, polycythemia, which is blood cancer. So I, my blood is really thick. So I have to give blood every month, um, still to this day. Um, and then I had it, the recent one was in December and surgery for, what is it, engine ovarian? Ovarian and um, cervical cancer. Yeah. I know. That's a, that's a, it's not like once you got hit and then got through it, you got hit several more times. Yeah. And she's all like, oh my God. I'm like, oh, we'll be fine. I'll be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> it's okay. Um, but yeah, it's. Working out has helped me a lot because I don't have to focus on the bad stuff that's happening. It's like you preach and you tell your clients, hey, you got to eat right. You know, I always, we always tell them, you got to take care of yourself because you want to, I want to live longer so I can play longer. Like, especially when you have kids, you know, I just don't want to eat crap and then I won't see my grandkids grow up or, you know, so we, I do that. We preach. And it's hard, it's hard, but it gives me like a little bit of schedule. I'm like, I'm looking forward to working out. I'm looking forward to eat right um, or cook something that's boring and make it better. Like, you know, and Claire's really amazing at that. It's like she puts this piece of chicken and all of a sudden it's like gourmet. And so how do you do that? I'll, I'll eat that. She was in the military. Let's talk about that and how maybe her, her taste buds don't work. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Claire, it sounded pretty good. I'll be right over. <laughs> Dude, this girl can cook. Have you seen my my ins? Oh, Katie, you got a good Instagram stories. Girl, I know, I know. I'm I'm old. Sorry, yeah, Claire. I get it. Oh no, I get it. No, that's TikTok. That's TikTok. <laughs> I feel so old on TikTok. But yeah, but working out, exercise, and eating right it, it helps me a lot. Um, I don't even know. Like I can't even explain how it's. It just, it just you just live longer, basically. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, then, and we've had. 
I mean, we've had so many letters written to us and emails and texts and just conversations with people who have literally said, said yeah. that. And we have clients like uh, that's doing the challenge. Her name is Shannon Fridiani. I don't know if you see her in the post, um, but she has a rare, um, she tore both of her knees and her doctor told her that she could never walk ever again. So she came to the gym in a wheelchair. And so and she's like, I can never walk again. And it was a challenge for me. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. You're going to be walking. So I trained her for the last, I don't know, 10 years that I was in that gym. And she can walk. She's done a composition. She's bodybuilding. She's doing squats every day. So, you know, it's, it's rewarding. So it sounds like, and, and we all know, like, confidence is a huge thing, right? So it sounds like going through this type of training, especially if you hadn't done it before, really is a confidence builder. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I mean, you must have people that you've trained that you've watched go from point A to point B. Oh, and it does, does. It, it happens to us too. Like, well, Claire's always like, hey. Um, <laughs> but like with me, it's like, I, when I'm off season, I'm just like, when, when she had to have her surgery, you know, she had, she did take some steps back physically. And oh, it's, yeah. it's hard to, it's a hard pill to swallow when you have been that stage ready to see your body. And I did my, so I went on stage with Claire, you know, my abs, everything, I'm all shredded. And then a week later, I go to surgery and I'm all like, wake up and I have this big belly and I'm just like, oh my God. It was like, I feel so defeated right now. Like, I don't even, I don't even know where to start. So it's the oh, same thing. It's like a mind fuck. It's just like, it happens to everybody. And she's like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's just like, huh. and up to this day, um, I'm on my eighth mark month mark my doctor's like six to eight months and then that bloat's gonna go away you're gonna have your flat stomach and i'm like it's still there <laughs> so um, like, i don't know if it's ever gonna be the same i'm not yeah. sure but but the, the idea is that all of us even if you do get super fit there's a point where you might have an illness or an injury mm -hmm. that will set you back and it's easy to say okay screw it you know i looked good then that was that was express. then this is now it is, it's easy for anybody, it, you know? I've had a shoulder surgery and my arm, like this arm was like the size of my wrist. I'm like, it's never coming back. It'll never come back. But you just, it's just another thing that you got to fight, you know? And I'll and that, on it. right. And, and that's got to play into the confidence level too, because um, for instance, the lady that came into the gym in a wheelchair, or even in my personal experience, I had, a, I broke my leg pretty bad about eight years ago, nine years ago. And I, before I met you guys, I pretty much couldn't walk and I had to go through, um, I worked with somebody for like physical therapy type thing. I had to go through basically training my body to believe, or maybe it was my mind to believe that I still could do that just because I had an injury. It's okay. I can recover, you know, and I can get through it. Um, but it sounds like there's a level of that too with, with working with you guys specifically, but, um, you know, going through a kind of a training program where you can actually believe that your body can do something you might never have believed before. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And there's different types. There's people that I, I, it's vanity. I'm just, I just want to look good. So you train them and the more they look better, their clothes are like smaller and smaller <laughs> at the gym. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Oh, we're it. just wearing a sports bra today. Awesome. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, booty shorts. All right. And then they feel good about themselves. And there's some like, hey, I don't really care what I look like. I just want to lift a hundred pounds. And so, you know, there's like different ones. So, Everybody has different goals, of course. Yeah. Or I just want to be able to bend over. Um, or get up when I'm, when I fall down, I just want to be able to get up or go after my grandkids or my kids because they're fast. Right. Right. You know, something that I was talking with my husband about last night, um, there's always crap going on in the world. I was going to say with all the crap going on in the world, but I mean, I guess I could have said that for the last 20 years, right? There's always crap going on. <laughs> um, but I was telling him, you know, if shit and fan were to meet here uh -huh. on, on our soil, um, I feel confident now having worked with Claire and Abby, even at this point that I could grab my son, throw him on my shoulder and run. If I needed to run, I could scale a wall. It would not be pretty, 
but I could scale a wall if I needed to scale a wall. And I'm thinking like, there's probably many people out there that might not be able to say that same thing. And what a comfort that is to me that I know that at any given moment, I can throw my almost eight year old, it's probably 50 pounds on my shoulder and go. And I know I can do it. Yeah, you can. It's called readiness. I mean, I think everybody should have that, should be able Mm -hmm. to pull themselves up, you know, be able to get up off the floor, be able to run. It's just readiness. It's, I think it's crucial. And again, not taught in school. Right. Not taught in school at all. And even if you don't have an eight-year-old you need to throw over your shoulder, like there's going to be times, you know, knock on wood that it doesn't happen, but the likelihood of it happening is there's going to be times when you're in a situation that you need to, your body needs to work for you mm-hmm. in order for you to get out of that situation. Yep. And so well, I feel or like- just like, just like with Abby, right? Like it didn't just happen once she had cancer three separate times. And so if that first time she just quit and gave up even just eating healthy, right? Like sugar feeds cancer. I think everybody knows that. And so if Abby was just eating whatever the hell she wanted, that could have looked entirely different. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And talking about sugar. So before I did chemo, we always brought something really sweet that we liked and we had to eat it before they give us chemo to um, wake up the, uh, the cancer cells. Isn't that crazy? Wow. So they would be all like, okay, I'm here. Like, I'm oh, and, then zap them. and then they zap. And then they zap. <laughs> They're like, duh. <laughs> so <laughs> let's talk about that a little bit. And, you know, because both Sherry and I are working with you. I've had some aha moments that I have discovered through working with you. I'm sure Sherry has had the same. Since we're on the topic of sugar, one giant thing that I learned, and I'm 42 years old. Like, I feel like, well, shit, I should have known this 20 years ago. How come I didn't know this 20 years ago? Because they don't teach it in school. Because it is not required for you to know in order to get a job and be a citizen out there. And it really needs to be because it's the basis of everything. But there are, how many names, Claire, for sugar? Like 150,000? <laughs> oh, well, over 50. For <laughs> yeah. And so, and, it's, and, and there's tons of foods that we think, think are healthy or we use on a daily basis that has all this added sugar in it. Can you speak a little bit to that? Why does it have all the sugar? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Americans are messed up because if you were to it's go to other countries, if you were to go to other countries, like my, my family's from Spain and they'll come over and they're like, why is there sugar in bread? Like, unless it's a, a cake, There shouldn't be sugar in it, you know, things like that. So that's a lot of just the, you know, U S culture, unfortunately. And doctors aren't going to tell you about candida. Did a doctor ever tell you about it? No, they don't want to, because they just need to prescribe medicine. Unfortunately, I'm sure there's some great doctors out there, but unfortunately, yes, that's the, that's the truth. But unless you go to a homeopathic doctor, unless you do your own research, you're not going to know about it. And it is, it causes so many problems within your body. Mm-hmm. So many, but there's so many traps. And I feel like I, I agree with you. I feel like it's hundred percent American diet. And I feel like all of these manufacturers out there are looking for the almighty buck. And they're like, we know that we can get these people addicted to sugar. That's a proven fact. So we're going to throw this sugar into absolutely every product we have and get these cats addicted to it. So they run out and spend their money constantly on, on all of this junk. So, I mean, that's just my personal opinion. Um, so let's no, talk about that. Calories. You know, they put everything zero calories, but the crazy or it'll thing- say, I mean, even like for keto, it'll say keto friendly. And I'm like, <laughs> read the package, fucking sugar in it. I'm like, right. there's no way it can be keto and sugar. Right. It, it just drives you nuts because people, your regular people who are not dietitians, who are not in this field will just grab something that says, you know, low fat or sugar free and have no clue that that's a lie. Or they'll say protein right. bar, but there's like two grams. There's of protein. two grams of protein, it's you like, know, and you girls know you need at least like 30. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what are some common traps that are out there that people fall into? What are a couple of those different words for sugar that people don't realize juices Juices. that drives me nuts i'm on a juice cleanse i'm like oh my god why and then they're putting it in this machine and it takes all the pulp and fiber out nutrients that we need (laughs) and then it's just the sugar juice you know it's like oh good for you i mean you're going to lose weight in the 
for that time being because you're not eating anything. But, but you're inflaming your entire body with all that sugar and feeding the candida. Yeah. Sh- so juice, I think that's the main thing that just drives me absolutely batshit. Or like anything zero calorie uh, drinks that we have because your body doesn't know it's fake sugar. So it still processes it the same as sugar. So. So those are huge traps. Yeah. That people fall into energy doing drinks. Yeah. Energy drinks. Yeah. Um, well, you smile there, Sherry. <laughs> I used to be terrible with energy drinks, but <laughs> honestly, like in even coffee, like just drinking calories because you know that I don't usually eat during the day. So I think that the biggest, my biggest trap was the mental, like I know starving my body's bad, but mentally I'm thinking like eating makes you fat. So I just wouldn't eat all day and only eat once at night. And it would probably be like terrible carbs or something, you know, like late, but then during the day, I'm just drinking a shit ton of calories, Starbucks, this, that, whatever. And so I don't know. I just think that because we're not taught this from a young age in schools or wherever, that it gets to be this cycle, more of a psychological thing, mm-hmm. right? Where you struggle with, even when we're working together, you know, I get on that kick of, oh, maybe I should just do keto. Maybe I should do this in the beginning instead of the plan that's for me, the plan that actually works. He calls you out too, huh? <laughs> Just like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's all right. Just hey, we can share. share. We can share. I'm not eating again. <laughs> it's no, so... I, mean, I am eating. But okay. I was laughing because I used to drink a shit ton of sugary, like, energy drinks. But I had no energy, right? Like, even <laughs> drinking those, I could drink two, three a day. Whereas now, I only drink one cup of coffee a day, which is super abnormal for me. Oh. And I feel like I have way more energy. Mm-hmm. And then also, we were talking about mental health. I think the serotonin levels and all of that, like, even if I'm having a bad day and I go to the gym, that makes me feel better. Even if I don't want to go. So. Yeah. It's huge. You walk into the gym with kind of like, you know, you're just trudging in there and you walk out and you're just energized and you feel so good about yourself and you've just done something wonderful for your body. So that's why I say work out first thing in the morning because that sets the tone for your day. You know, it's just magic. Totally agree. If the rest of the day goes to shit, at least you accomplish that one thing. Right. And that's a confidence builder right there. Exactly. Cause you did it. You pulled yourself up by your bootstraps, went in there, did the work. Yeah. That's a huge confidence booster. You could have just laid in bed like everybody else. Right. Exactly. And, and I feel like Sherry brings up a good point because this is another aha that I had with working with the two of you is that starving the body. So AKA not eating actually is counterproductive to weight loss. Something that I did not, I might've heard it along the, along the way, but something that I did not connect with until we connected and started working together. Can you explain kind of low level how that, why that is? Starvation. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Oh, so our bodies are engines. So we need to fuel these engines. And if you, um, if you, don't have any food coming in consistently, your body turns to storing. So you've heard of like, you know, the paleo diet where people were like your hunter gatherers, they need to like constantly have all this food on hand. And then, then they would pack on the fat for the winter back in the day, back in the Neanderthal days that was, that worked for them back then. We now have food at our readiness all the time and we're eating crap. Grab hub. Yeah. So what's happening is people, and, and especially in our generation and females in our generation, because remember Wave, <laughs> remember supermodels? I knew all of them by name. I wanted to be, you know, the whole thing. Oh, I love them so much. They and they always talked about starving, you know. Kate Moss, God, I don't know if she's ever eaten a carb in her life. I don't think so. <laughs> right. So or a that, hamburger. Right. So that happened to us, you know, in that, in the generation that we're in that we just didn't eat. And unfortunately what happens is your body just starts to take anything that comes in that latte that you had, that's 500 calories with the milk or whatnot, that's going to be converted right into fat in your body because your body is like, I don't know when the next meal is coming. I need to serve this and make sure that um, it's, it's survival mode. So then if you do that for 20, 30 years, you have messed up your metabolism. It is completely deranged. And so when we get clients, we tell them if they're in their forties, like we are, I'll say, okay, how long have you been doing this? 
20, well, I don't know, my whole life. Hungry. Yeah. So then it's like, okay, your metabolism is junk. And what's going to happen now is we're going to start to rev it up. You might see some results right away. Maybe not because what happens <laughs> is you need to like, you need to, it needs to trust you again. Your body needs to trust that food's going to be coming in consistently every two to three hours, the right balance. That's important too. Proteins, fats, and carbs. You can't just do carbs every two to three hours because then it's a huge spike and then a crash. And also it causes you to, you know, yeah, whatever, be gain weight yeah, or diabetic. Okay. So there's a huge, there's a huge, there's a whole reason why diabetic. we balance our, our macros and we say to eat every two to three hours. So I hope that answers the question. So like we retrain your body. So for example, let's make it mom nation stuff. You guys are mommies and you guys have kids. So at one point, you know, like when people go, I, I, I'm not, I'm never hungry. I don't want to eat. I'm not hungry. Right. Because right? you're just go, go, go. I got a house. I got to show this 5 billion home house so I can pay, pay Claire and Evan. No, <laughs> 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 or, you know, so then your, your kid goes, I'm sure Sherry, you guys be like, hey, mom, hey, mom, look at me, look at me, look at me, mom. And then you're like, five more minutes, I'm trying to sell this house, I'm doing emails, or I'm trying to teach them how to do my makeup. Ten minutes later, mom, mom. Cher's like laughing, but like, oh my God, this is real. This is real life. Mom, 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 please be you. Look, 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 look. And you're like, five more minutes. And it's been two hours. And then all of a sudden you remember. You're like, oh crap. Uh, where'd my kid go? You turn around, your makeup's all over the floor, <laughs> cut the hair, wearing your heels, walking around, you know, so that's what your body's doing. So at one point, your body was like, whoa, 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 hungry, feed me. And you're like, no, I'm too busy, hang on five more minutes. 10 minutes later, oh, I'm hungry. Let me drink something and I'm blah, blah, blah. So, and then after that, your body's, your, your body's just like, oh, what am I gonna do? I don't have anything to eat. I'm just gonna go use whatever I have, which is what do you guys have that's really important in your body? Like your muscle. Protein. Absolutely. So that's how why how skinny fats happen sometimes. So that's really interesting because that, that was, was a problem. fast analogy. <laughs> I know. I was like, mom, 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 I was like, I like that way better. <laughs> yeah, no, that was great. That helped put it into perspective. So you understand, hey, your body is just kind of out there Thanks. going crazy. <laughs> But it's fixable is what I'm hearing. Even if you beat your metabolism to crap for years upon years upon years, it's fli- it's fixable. It is fixable. If you're it is. And then we retrain you. So if you've only been eating one time, so the meal plan will be like, hey, okay, let's um, do two times. And then as your body gets used to it, you're going to be like, Claire, I'm starting to get really hungry. Then yeah. we add another meal. And then it's like, no, I'm getting really, really hungry. So we keep adding things until you're on your five, six meals. I noticed that because I was one of those girls, you know, breakfast, psh, what's that? Um, lunch, maybe dinner <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, but I now get, I know when it's my two or three hour, I don't have to look at the clock Yeah. because my stomach tells me and I'm like, oh, okay, time to go. So yeah, I feel like, I mean, that's inspirational all in and of itself because, you know, again, not being properly educated, I thought, well, once your metabolism goes, it goes, this is nothing you can do. Oh, well, might as well let yourself go drink another beer. It's great. Mm-hmm. No. Or so. a banana is like two beers. So. <laughs> That's a whole nother story. <laughs> so Cher, you must have had, I have a few other ahas, but you must have had some ahas working with them. Um. Yeah, just the fact that I was like, listen, guys, I'm in a low place, like, and you want me to eat a lot. And I've got these three kids. I'm transitioning to single motherhood. Like, I don't have time to go to the gym. I don't have time to work out, but I want it. I want it really bad. So what do I do? And just the fact that they were amazing at customizing, especially in the beginning, I was like, hey, it's COVID. All the gyms are shut down. Like, I need something that I can do at home. So they literally personalized everything for all of those things, all of those objections, like all of mountains. those excuses. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Like, hey, I have this mountain. I know. I was like, like, okay, do this now that she's talking about. That was awesome. <laughs> Send me a picture. <laughs> but then, you know, it it got to the point where it was fun too. And the check, like the accountability check-ins, I think are huge. Um, you know learning new habits, like taking pictures every Monday and scale victories, but not 
that everything's based on the scale. And so I think for me, like I initially started seeing my clothes were fitting differently. Mm -hmm. Um, that was like my first, yes, you know, this is happening. Um, but yeah, I mean, if my personal suggestion to everybody out there, I'm a mom of three, like I said, I just transitioned to single motherhood again. And so any mom that's listening to this, if you're like, no, I just don't have time. I promise you, you can find blocks within your day, Mm -hmm. even with a zoo full of kids, animals, work, I work full time. You can do it if you really want it. And um, Claire and Abby are amazing to work with. They will customize everything for you. They check in, they get your temp check. You can be open and honest with them. And I tell them like, Hey, yell at me. That's what I need. I need that. Like, so Abby, you know, when she yells at people, cause it's military like, kind of, <laughs> and that speaks to that Sherry. Kind of trainer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, actually, it's just a mohawk that makes me look a little tough, but, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's my biggest thing is that there's no excuse. Um, like you said earlier, Abby was in chemo, obviously, like there's literally no excuse, but even coming from the mom's side, um, if you want it, if it's something that is important to you, which it should be, you're investing in yourself. You know, Abby said, you're going to live longer. Um, I can run with my toddler more and I don't get tired or just even being out in the hot sun. I'm not like, Ugh, I want to go inside, you know, as quick. Mm -hmm. But just little things like that make a huge difference in my quality of life, but their quality of life too. And now you can teach your girls because you have three girls. That's going to be something that they, that's an an opportunity, you know, for Mm -hmm. them. And there have been moments like where I've texted Claire and Abby and I'm like, oh, the kids just said this, you know, and it's like super cute. So (laughs) I love that. And and I too have noticed uh, mental clarity since I've been working with them, like a whole, whole lot more. I can like, as my husband's probably like, yeah, like as if she needed that, but I can get a lot more done. Um, (laughs) I know more than I was doing before, but seriously, mental clarity. I sleep better at night. That's huge. Um, happier, just all around happier. Like I find that little things bother me less. Mm -hmm. For yeah. some reason, I don't know why, but I mean, I'm liking it. My, my husband's certainly liking it. That's for sure. Um, Our periods. Oh. Katie and I like have texts all the time and we're like, did this happen? Yes, this has happened. My period used to be the worst. It's so much better now. Oh, yeah. Wow. So that's a giant. I don't know if I shared that with you guys yet, but I used to have like, my periods would keep me home. That's why when we first started, I was like, okay, when it's shark week, like I, I can't do anything. Yeah. Remember we had that conversation and you're like, yeah, okay. Uh, all right. I know we were like, huh? And yeah. then, and then shark week came and I, I maybe took one day off and I was okay. Like, hey. And now it comes and I'm still going. Um, awesome. I would have it for like five to seven days. I couldn't leave the house. It was, I would be crying in fetal position because I had so bad cramps or such bad cramps. I would be afraid that I would have an accident out so I wouldn't leave because it was so heavy for at least two days. And so it totally ran my life. And now it's a completely different ball game. I had no idea that it would affect that so positively to the point that before I started working with you guys, I have been talking with my doctor about um, pulling it all out. Wow. Yeah. And getting a hysterect- hysterectomy because I'm like, I'm so sick of this running my life. I'm not having any more children. Um, I'm tired of this every month. And she's like, well, you know, let's try this supplement, which she's naturopath. So the supplements are cool, cool. But she never was like, hey, why don't you work out and see how that goes? Or why don't you, you know, step it up in in your exercise routine and, and see how that works? Never mentioned that to me. I don't fault her for that, but I thought that it was extremely, extremely interesting that it also, this program also affected that for me. So it's a really good point, Cher. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that was debilitating. And now I'm not getting this because I don't need to, I don't feel the need to anymore to get to fork out all the dough and to have all the downtime to get this surgery that I, I really don't need. I mean, a surgery. Can you like, that is just mind blowing. Like, Hey, I was going to have a surgery, a major surgery 
but working out Mm -hmm. eliminated that need. Yeah. And so now I get to be hot and I don't have to have surgery. So (laughs) moving on, (laughs) right? I'm the shark. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Show you shark week. You get a Um, house. You get a house. You get a house. (laughs) (laughs) That's how it's been this week. Seriously. And again, with endurance, it's benefiting me in at work where I can do all my work, get all my work done. It's crazy. Just like Abby just joked about it's literally like that right now Um, but then I still have time for my kid when he gets home from school and I'm still able to go run out jump on the trampoline go out play in the pool play a game of cards whatever it is like I still have that attention I'm not grouchy as shit by the time the day is over and I've got the endurance still so I mean like all around like huge round of applause the Lamberts love Claire and Abby I'll tell you um, you're a household name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we love you. Uh, ditto. Oh, so yeah. something that really started sparking, um, and I know we don't have a ton of time left, so, so I'll go fairly quickly, but I wanted to talk about this a little bit. Um, as you were talking about the camaraderie, uh, you know, Sherry and I kind of feel this because we support each other through this journey. We have you, you two, which I feel there's like a, sort of a team effort there. Like we're going through this all together. Um, I feel like a, so, so we've always heard throughout life, Hey, have a workout buddy. It really helps. It keeps you motivated, that kind of thing. And I think that's hundred percent true, but I love what you were saying about the community that you start to build. Once you get into this world, um, you know, maybe it's a couple of other gym buddies that you have, maybe a few friends like, you know, Sherry and I kind of found, I mean, we were friends before, but we found, Hey, we really like doing this thing and leaning on each other. Um, talk to me a little bit about how that has helped maybe some of your clients in terms of getting to that higher level, simply because of that community support. Oh, absolutely. All of our clients, well, we do the, we do individual one-on-ones a lot and we do tiny groups and, but then we do those boot camps um, on Sundays. We do a boot camp at 7.30 on Sundays. And that's where they all get to meet each other. And so the first few times, you know, you know, it's a little, we're goofy. So they already know who we are, but then they get to know that everybody else that we, you guys don't realize it, but when we, when you guys are calling us to see if you want to work with us, we're interviewing you. We want to know if you're obvious in, but in all honesty, if you're the right client for us, you can handle but also if you, if you can handle this, this. <laughs> um, but no, um, if you, if we jive, if we all have the same vibe, it's so important to have the same, and I don't want to sound like cheesy, but we have to have the same vibration. There's just no way that I, we've, and we've had to get rid of clients because we just, it didn't work, you know, and it would, it would suck from us. And, you know, we need to give that to our clients. So um, groups, they would meet each other and they're like, oh my God, we're all crazy. <laughs> it's like, yes. Yay. yes. <laughs> yeah. So then, yeah, we've got so many clients now that want to work out together and they get together on their own and it, it is a community and we've got our app where even if you don't even live in the same state, you guys can kind of banter back and forth or share recipes or whatever on the groups on the app. Um, but it's huge to have somebody to work out with it, And even if they don't work out together, we have clients who are like, oh, what did so-and-so do? Oh, what did so-and-so do? And then so we can be like, oh, they did da 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 And then, you know, there's that competition. So it's just, it's, it's kind of like having a little family, all of our little kids. It's and, an accountability. You know? yeah. yeah. Accountability is huge with that. I feel like. It's like Claire and I, we go to the gym and she's like, it's leg day. I'm like, mm, I don't want to do legs. But we'll still work out right next to each other, but she's doing something else and I hate a leg day. So (laughs) So you kind of keep each other accountable. And and even to this day with everything that you do and all the people that you train, you guys need that still? Yeah. Tell me about that because that blows my mind. We can't train each other. <laughs> For, yeah. oh. well, no. I can't give her a meal plan. She can't give me. I can't give her one. So trainer, yeah, I hire my own uh, prep coach and then she has her own prep coach. So but just as far as like training and making sure we're eating right, it's it's still something that we have to plan for. On Sundays, we have to decide what we're gonna meal prep. And while we're doing our schedules for our clients, we have to schedule our, our time in to work out because it's send very pictures. I hate sending pictures to my coach. Yeah, okay. sometimes we'll, you know, we'll have to check on each other, see how we're doing. Yeah. Aha, uh-huh. you heard it here, folks. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, it's um it's, it's, it's Monday. I got to 
that little taco I just ate. Ooh, it's gonna show. <laughs> and they and they they'll know too. They'll be like, "So what'd you eat?" Like, what do you mean? That's so funny that you say <laughs> you're that. You're a little you're a little bloated, and you just you don't look right. And they're very direct, and you're just like, "Oh my god, my feelings!" Like, and then the next week, you're just like, "I'll show you, I'll show you." And then I'm like, "I won't eat anything." We have those moments too. Yeah. And then I go, she's like, no, you're too flat. You didn't eat anything. You starved yourself. <laughs> and like, Dang it. Next week, it's like, okay, I'm going to get it right. And then she's always there like, should you be eating that? And I'm all like, okay. <laughs> so trainers. So what you're trainers saying too. is you're human. Right. Yep. And they're oh, human. Big time. big time. Yeah. And Fun it, just, bullies. it just takes planning. That's just the bottom line. Just plan and have a goal and a focus excuse I can't even work out it was funny talk, talk about excuses I'm like I have a torn shoulders both my shoulders and my biceps but I work around it no excuses except the fun place right here should you be doing that put it down <laughs> that means it's all leg day <laughs> That's so funny that you say that about the pictures. Cause I was, I was laughing with Matt the other day when we had our coach called Claire, um, you were asking, so how's it going? How's the, you know, eating and everything. And I'm telling you all the stuff. And at the end of it, Cher, she goes, yep. That's what I see in your pictures. Okay. So yeah. I'm like, Ooh, tricky. <laughs> Sherry knows. Sherry knows. <laughs> pictures do yeah. not lie. They don't lie. They don't. We just know we're, we have our finger on the pulse so much um, that we, we do know each one of our clients. Like we actually take the time to get to know you guys and, and find out what, you know, what's going on in your life too, that could be affecting your progress and Treatment. success. Yeah. So let's talk about that. And, and it's getting close. So that'll have to be our last topic. Sorry, guys. I feel like I could talk to you forever, as you know. Um, but let's talk about that a little bit because I saw a post from Claire, I think it was a couple of days ago. And it was something to the effect of, yeah, you know, you can go online and you can get a plan and you can get a workout plan and meal plan, whatever. But does this coach really know you and how important that is? And I think a lot of people don't realize that I certainly yeah. do because no online, even my doctor wouldn't have brought up the fact that Hey, all the work that you're doing and everything that's going on right now, you're, you're not, your body is not reacting appropriately. Look into this candida thing. That's what Claire told me. Lo and behold, turns out I had a terrible case of it. Once I got that handled, I really started to see some progress, like massive progress, like share in a week. It was insane, but yeah, I never would like have known that. Sleep. Yeah. What's that? Just like me with the sleep. I wasn't sleeping. And that's the first thing that Claire picked up on and was like, you need to sleep. You have to sleep. Yeah. Right. Right. And so can you talk a little bit, maybe elaborate on, on just what your mindset was with that post? Um, because I feel like there's so much information we can Google anything we want and get an answer. Right. Mm -hmm. But is that really the best route to go? And, and, and let's talk about the importance of a coach. Uh, yeah, well, importance of a good coach, <laughs> importance of a coach that actually is listening and participating and interacting with you, it, especially here in Arizona, everyone's a coach. <laughs> like, I, I'm like, really, <laughs> everybody's a, a coach and a, um, they can be one time. And they're and they're like, so it's, so we have people come to us all the time here and they're like, oh, I have this coach and I've had the same meal plan for eight months. I'm like, what, <laughs> what? Um, and they're like, oh, and I also have this condition where I can't even eat this that's on my meal plan. I'm like, why is it on your meal plan? Well, they just, that's what they gave me. What, you know, there's this thing. It's so, I can't imagine how frustrating it must be for people because I, when I look at it, I'm, I get frustrated. So um, not just like nutritionally, you know, with the meal plans, like um, workouts, there's just such cookie cutter workouts. And it's like, no, their, their goal was this. And you touched on it a little bit ago or at the very beginning, um, cardio just go run, just run your fucking ass off. No, that is not really your knees. Are you taking into account if maybe if they're overweight, if it's going to bust their knees or, you know, there's so many things that I just don't think, um, or I know people don't pay attention to. It's easier to just be like, give me the 50 bucks. You know, I'm a cheap trainer. Give me 50 bucks. I'll give you a meal plan workout dah, 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 and I'll go on to the next one. It's just like this. And it's the same workout, the same meal plan. Yeah. 
than everybody else. So, but um, it's just the two of us. We can only handle so many clients and we want to give each client all of our attention. So we're, we will, we do cap out on clients. We can't take clients sometimes. So, because we just, you guys know, like there's only so many hours in the day, <laughs> but it's because we care and we really want every single one of our clients to succeed and we'll do anything, anything you both know that we'll do anything we can for that to happen. A hundred percent. I do know that. I do too. I, I totally agree. So share any ahas for you as far as, Hey, I would have never discovered X, Y, Z about myself, like the sleep thing, if it wouldn't have been for Abby and Claire. Um, yeah, I mean, beyond that, um, you know, just understanding and recognizing that stress and fatigue have a big part in, you know, your ability to be fit and healthy. Um, and then also, the things that I thought I couldn't do, like you were saying earlier with your leg, um, you know, I was injured in the military too. And so like, I thought "Eh, I can't run anymore. I can't do this or thinking, no, I need to run a million miles in order to get skinny. No fasted cardio is like my lifesaver. I love you guys. I've never heard about fasted cardio before. And now I literally tell everybody about it. So so that was a huge, Right. And like, it's not even, you don't need to kill yourself to do fasted cardio at all, but it's a huge game changer. And so you stick just with a little it. thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Because it's not like super stressful on your body. It's not something that's killing you, but it's showing you results. And so I know for me that I need to see results to stay motivated long term. Right. And working with you guys has made that easier, though. If there's a week that I'm not seeing results, you guys help me keep that motivation. And so that's been really great. But overall, since I've started working with you, I've seen huge changes, changes that I just didn't think were possible anymore in my body. Like, oh, I'm too old. I've had too many kids. Like, it's just not going away. But it has. So, I know. I know. I'm so proud of you. That is so awesome. All right, guys. Well, like I said, I have so, I have so much more, like we need to do this again because I can talk to you for another straight hour again, because you guys are so amazing. Um, but for those out there that might not know who you are, might not know how to contact you or connect with you. Um, I like, I want to make mention that no matter where you are, you don't have to be in the Phoenix, Arizona area. Claire and Abby can train you across the country, right guys? Yes. Awesome. So how can we connect with you if we don't already have the connection like we do <laughs> we're on facebook so madfit unlimited on facebook or madfit underscore unlimited on instagram awesome if somebody has questions they can just message you or our website madfitunlimited.com awesome ladies or tiktok i'm just kidding <laughs> i was just gonna say tiktok Uh-oh. i don't even oh, know yes. what my tiktok thing is have i seen the new tiktok channel i don't know i'm gonna have to go look Cause Sherry's, Sherry's getting everybody on TikTok. She's like, dude, you have to do it. I'm like, I'm old. TikTok's not for me. She goes, it's for you. <laughs> Sherry, how do I do a duet? <laughs> She's Screen bad. record. This is how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> she knows all the things. Plus she has a secret weapon. She has a 15 year old at home. So like they know I'm everything, me. right? Brilliant. Constantly. Yeah. I'm like, Ariana, what do I do? Exactly. It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. All right, everybody. Well, if you are interested in being a guest on the show, please follow us at Mom Nation USA. That is our handle. And we are on TikTok. Thanks to Woo-hoo. Sherry. We are on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube as well. We also have MomNationUSA.com. So those are all the ways that you can get with us. Just shoot us a message while you're at it. Give us a like on our Facebook page. Give us a little love, right? Um, But shoot us a message if you think that you would be a great guest. We would love to talk with you. And then while you are there, especially right now, listening to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform, please subscribe, download, and rate us so that you can help us get this real information out to the mass. We want all the mamas to know, especially about Abby and Claire, but we want all the mamas to know everything that we talk about here. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Have a Thanks, good one. Guys. Talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.